If you've ever had trouble letting go, I need you to believe something from the bottom of your heart. My grandmother gave me this quilt for my wedding. And normally you would say that that probably wasn't an unusual present, except for the fact that my grandmother had been dead for five years already when I got my quilt. Today I want to talk with you about not only my grandmother's quilt, but also give you some decluttering tips that finally helped me let go of 30 years of sentimental clutter. Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're a subscriber, welcome back. My name is Marissa and I am a former sentimental hoarder turned minimalist mom. Last year, my family and I extreme decluttered our entire home down to eight suitcases and then we moved overseas to Europe. So suffice to say, I know a little bit about decluttering. If you would like to make sure to see more videos on how to live minimally as a family, I would love it if you would go down and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring the bell so that you get a notification when I share any new videos and you'll be updated right away. By the time I was 20 years old, I had already Already lost my mother, lost my father, and in fact the year that my father died I lost eight people that I cared about, including the grandmother that made me this quilt. I know exactly how hard it is to let go of sentimental clutter. So even though I was only 20 years old, in terms of grief years I was probably 78. As an emotional hoarder, everything was sentimental to me. Everything. It wasn't even a question in my mind back then. Of course I was going to keep all of this stuff from my loved ones. Stuff was all that I had left. How could I even consider getting rid of it? Oh, and by the way, if you thought that you can only get attached to things from people who have passed away, let me tell you, I was once attached to an olive oil bottle. My husband had owned it the entire time that we had been together. And when we were moving, I had the toughest time getting rid of this olive oil bottle just because it had spanned the entire length of our relationship. Sentimental clutter, not just for people who have passed away. When I first discovered minimalism, it was just like a lightning bolt went through my whole body. The idea that I could surround myself with things that brought me joy. It was just like the sunrise rising on 30 years of grief. If you've ever had trouble letting go, I need you to believe something from the bottom of your heart. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Tell it to yourself now. I can do this. I can do this. If I could declutter 30 years of sentimental clutter, you can too. Gosh, I should have gotten some Kleenexes tissues before I started doing this video. Oh boy, let's just go get that now. Got it. There's a quote that I really love and it goes something like this. Get rid of clutter and you may just find it was blocking the door you've been looking for. Now I want you to stop and think about that quote for a second. What could clutter be blocking in your life? If you have trouble letting go, if you have trouble decluttering sentimental items, I want you to know you're not alone and you can do this. You deserve to do it. You deserve to be happy. Let's move on to my best tips for how to sort through and declutter sentimental items. First of all, you should never ever start with your most sentimental items first. If you start with sentimental clutter, that is a recipe for disaster. So when you're starting decluttering, start with something easier first. Maybe clothing is easier for you. Maybe you would like to declutter your kitchen a little bit and kind of get the feel for how to declutter somewhere that's a little bit easier than starting with your very, very emotionally packed most sentimental items. I've said this before in another video on my biggest decluttering mistakes. You don't start training to run a marathon by just going out and running a marathon. Likewise, you don't wanna start with your most difficult clutter items first. 
The next tip is to set realistic goals for yourself and have a plan as to what you're trying to achieve. There's a lot of videos that I've seen that's like becoming a minimalist in one day, decluttering my entire home in one day. Maybe that works for people who are college students living in one room or single people living in a tiny studio apartment. Especially if you're older and you have had a lot more life experience, you are going to have a lot more stuff to sort through and it's unrealistic to expect that you're going Going to be able to accomplish everything all in one day. Rome was not built in a day and homes are not decluttered in an entire day, usually. If you have been tasked with sorting through someone else's home, say you have a loved one who has passed on and you have an entire home to sort through, don't expect that you're going to be able to do all of that yourself. Try to get help from other family members, get help from friends, or maybe you even can consult with an estate sale company that can help you because it's overwhelming to try to tackle so much clutter on your own. The next tip is to acknowledge and respect that you are going to have feelings. When my father died, I was a college student working at a grocery store. I got the call at work that he had passed away and I needed to go to the nursing home right away. And I found that the work policy was you get three days off for immediate family members and then you're expected to go back to work after those three days. So that's what I did. I went back to work. I really needed the money, so what else was I going to do? My point with this is that in our society, we do not get a lot of time to emotionally cope with the feelings that we have to process when we lose someone that we love. Not just with death, that's with breakups and everything else. It just seems like people expect you to move on really fast. We are given a very short window of time to recover from something that can take a person a lifetime to emotionally recover from, if they ever recover from it. Decluttering your home has a way of bringing up emotions that you may have shoved down in the past. Remember to give yourself time and grace and allow yourself to cry. Heaven knows I've cried a lot. And reach out for emotional support and help from friends, family, or even therapists if you can. The next tip is to start sorting your sentimental clutter with items that are your very, very favorites first. Start with things that you know that you absolutely love. There's no question in your mind that you want those items. For example, I knew I would never, ever, ever get rid of my grandmother's quilt. My grandmother passed away five years before my wedding, but she still managed to give me this quilt. The story behind this quilt is I was at my wedding shower at the point where we're starting to open presents when my sister handed the package to me, the card that was on the front, a note handwritten from my grandma that said, for Marissa's wedding made in 2003 by grandma. When <sighs> it was like she was reaching out and hugging me. It was so wonderful. This has so much more value and meaning to me than any blanket that I could buy at the store. So my point is, starting with your favorites, you can use those as a compass to guide you when you get to those little areas that you're not quite so sure about. And then the next tip is after you've gone to the favorites, the next try to go to the stuff that you know you absolutely don't care about whatsoever. Maybe you don't care about grandma and grandpa's silverware. Maybe their encyclopedia collection doesn't really appeal to you. Who uses encyclopedias now? Everything's online. After you've gotten your favorites out, then you can kind of go and attack those things that you know you absolutely don't want to have anymore and get rid of them. And that tip is going to make the next tip a little bit easier, which is to let go of your decluttering guilt, especially when it comes to those gray area sentimental clutter items, or what I like to call the just because items. These just because items, you find yourself making excuses for just because it belonged to someone, just because it costs a lot of money, just because it made me happy in the past. You know that you really don't want or need those items in your home. A lot of the sentimental clutter excuses seem to revolve around guilt. Don't feel like you need to keep something just because it 
made you happy or even made someone else happy in the past. Just because something belonged to someone that you loved doesn't mean you have to be the caretaker for it the rest of your life. I mean, sure, you could keep that thing in a box in your basement for 20 more years, or even better, you could send that item on and give it the chance to be loved by someone else. And I think that that is the better of the two options. You know, they always say, if you love someone, set them free. It's kind of like that with clutter that you don't love anymore. Set it free. Try to remind yourself that your emotions and your loved ones are in your memory they are not in the physical possessions that you have left behind from them. Now, when you hit that gray area and you're really, really having trouble, the next tip is about what kinds of questions to ask yourself when you're really having a hard time. So here are some of the questions that I like to ask myself when decluttering sentimental items. Does an item make you happy? Do you have a place in your home for that item? Does an item add value to your life? Will you or your loved ones really need need that item in the future. And finally, what emotions or memories are motivating you to keep that item? The next tip for sorting through sentimental clutter is actually physically sorting it. You can have a memory box or another box that's labeled keep so that you can go and just redistribute those items throughout your house when you figure out where they're going. Have a box labeled donate. Those are the items that you're going to be sending on to Goodwill or the Salvation Army. And then you can also have a box labeled sell. I love selling my own old sentimental items because I know that they're going on to a place where somebody else is going to love them. The next tip is to find ways to use and honor your sentimental items. If I keep something sentimental, generally it's because I'm going to be using it on a daily, weekly or monthly basis. For example, my mother's wedding ring, which by the way, you can pretty much always hear clanking around in the background of my videos. Sorry, it's a little bit loose. I guess she had bigger fingers than me. I also use my father's knives every single day. Point is, find ways to use and honor sentimental items around your home. And I also mentioned before, you could keep a memory box, a shadow box frame. It's also fun to repurpose items into new things. I've seen people frame grandma's doilies. I've seen them turn old baby clothes into quilts. And the last tip when decluttering sentimental items is to know yourself. As the Oracle in Delphi said, no one but you knows how much an item truly means to you and what place that item is going to have in your life. Give yourself time and don't do anything you will regret because unlike other items when you're decluttering that can be replaced, Sentimental clutter, once it's gone, it's usually gone for good. It's really a great idea to give yourself time and be honest with yourself. That doesn't mean you're not going to be pushing yourself. Just because you keep something this year doesn't mean you won't declutter it the next. Things change, people change. Anyway, I hope that you found these tips on how to declutter sentimental items helpful. If you did, please make sure to give this video a like and go down and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. We would love you to join our minimalist family.